Good day, boys and girls. Welcome back to Sunday School with me, Colin. And today we're going to look at some animals in the Bible. Animals in the Bible. So there's lots of songs about animals. And we'll maybe sing two of them now, and then we'll sing another one at the end. Something's going on. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, burning sun with golden beam, and silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him.
song, Oh Praise Him, Hallelujah. We're going to now uh, talk about animals in the Bible. This has been prepared by Hannah Holland, a young girl in high school now at our summer camps. And she's really, really uh, been preparing PowerPoints on the Bible, studying the Bible, the scriptures, and doing PowerPoint is a wonderful way to help increase your knowledge about God, about the Bible. And I was talking to her, her mum and dad, and Hannah was telling me she prepared these, and I thought they're brilliant. I'm going to share these on Sunday school with the boys and girls. That's a really good thing. And we're going to pray before we look at what Hannah has produced for us. Father, we just thank you this, this, today for Sunday school. We'll thank you for the boys and girls. We'll thank you for families. We'll thank you for the Word of God that never changes the Bible. And we just love it, Lord. And the more we look into it, the more we find. And the more we find, the more we want to look into it and learn so much about you. Father, we just pray you'll help us learn more about the Bible today, especially in relation to animals in your name we pray. Amen. Wow, this is a really good study. Animals in the Bible. And Hannah's also prepared shapes in the Bible, numbers in the Bible, and a fourth one that doesn't come to mind, but we're going to come to it as well. So animals in the Bible. Um, and here we are. Can you recognize all these animals? It's amazing whenever we think about animals, we think about creation, we think about the handiwork of God when God said, let there be. And now you have your elephants, your rhinos, your giraffes, your zebras, your donkeys, your deers, and all the birds, and all the details, and all the colours, and I'm just amazed at our Creator God. Many animals in the Bible, of course, we're not going to look at them all. Just a few. You've got little birds and you've got ducklings and, and instinct. Nature is a wonderful thing. When the wee uh, animals have their babies, they are naturally drawn to each other. The wee ones follow the mother and the mother protects, of course. And so the first one we're going to look at is eagle. And so if you were doing a study of the scriptures, for example, a thesaurus is a good way to learn more about what words mean but whenever you type in the word eagle for example into the bible it'll bring you up every reference that you have the word eagle or the word eagles a great bible verse to encourage christians is isaiah 40 verse 31 but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So always remember the great eagle, the great bird of prey. It rises up. And there's only one other bird. I remember reading this here by eagles. It's a bigger bird of prey. But the eagle is very, very wise. If, if it's being attacked by the other bird, then the eagle finds the sun and soars towards the sun. It can look at it, but the other bird can't. It gets distracted, it gets lost and gives up the chase. And that's a lesson in life. When things go wrong, when things don't go wrong, Find the Son of God and keep looking towards Jesus, the author and finisher of your face. But they that wait upon the Lord will renew your strength when you become tired, when you become weary, when you get disheartened, discouraged. Uh, wait on the Lord. Again, I say wait on the Lord. Many times the Bible talks about waiting on God. And then you will mind up your wings as eagles, not run or be weary and not walk. They shall walk but not faint. It's a lovely one there in Isaiah. Then sheep, the Bible talks so many about she many times about sheep, about lambs, and very often, of course, the Lord Jesus is betrayed, is pictured, uh, portrayed, pictured as a lamb or as a sheep. All we like sheep have gone astray. Do you ever notice sheep, they'll just break out and if there's a hole in the fence, they'll break out, they'll wander, they'll just keep going, they need a shepherd to look after them, they need fences to keep them in. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we're like sheep, we go astray because of sin, we go astray, we just want to do our own thing, we're very selfish by nature, but when God comes into the life of a person, then you surrender your heart to God and your life to God, he becomes your shepherd, and then the, like the sheep want to follow the shepherd, they want to hear the shepherd's voice, and that's a picture of what we want to do with God. So whenever you see sheep, 
Think about the Lord Jesus. He was a, like John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Doves is a very pure word, a very pure bird. And many times you'll find the word dove, especially it starts off in Noah. Whenever Noah, um, the waters receded after the flood, Noah opened the window and he sent out a dove. But the wee dove, um, first of all, a raven went out, but the raven didn't come back because it can live off. Uh, it's a scavenger bird. It can live off the dead flesh. But a wee dove didn't want to do that. It's a pure bird. It was looking for leaves. It was looking for seed. So that dove came back into the ark. And then Noah sent it out again. And it came back with an olive leaf plucked off. Which means the waters were going down. And he said, oh that I had wings like a dove. For I would fly away and be at rest. So he even pictured about flying away and being at rest. And the Lord Jesus says, come aside and rest a while. That's why Sunday's important. We don't go to school. Most people don't go to work. They don't work. They can be at home. They can relax and rest with their family. But that also implies going to church, learning about God, the Bible. And whenever you rest in him, you're worshipping him, you're learning about God, you're thinking about him, you're praying to him. And that's resting and building your body up and your spirit up again with God. Of course, the wee dove or the eagles or many, many little animals don't like Mr. Foxy. The, this is pictured as a devil. The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a box, lock him up and throw away the key. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. And way back in the book of Ezekiel and Ezra and Nehemiah, they were, the, the enemies of Nehemiah and Ezra were mocking them. Because they were, when they were building the wall of Jerusalem, they said it's so weak that when a fox jumps up, it's going to fall down. Of course they were mocking God's people, the Jewish people, have never fell down. Of course it wouldn't fall down whenever they built it up. But the Bible talks about a fox. The hens don't like a fox. He's crafty. He's going to walk around and he's watching as if he's just there for a visit. And he's wait, waiting on his moment to strike and to attack. Oh, Israel, this reminds me of Christian like thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Of course the foxes will survive very well in the desert. They'll survive, they keep going, nobody feeds them. They find their food, they find their prey, they don't really sleep at night, they're always watching. So many ways we can learn from these here. We we'll always need to be on our guard, always need to be on our alert, and always need to keep trusting God that he'll look after us and provide. Another animal mentioned in the Bible is the bear. I don't know if you've ever seen a bear. If you see a bear, my advice to you would be to run and run very fast. Or else if you can't run fast, to say, lie still, pretend you're dead, and hopefully the bear will keep walking past you. We all roar like bears and more so like doves. Doves and bears mentioned in the same verse. We look for judgment, but there is none for salvation, but it is far from us. Also, bears are mentioned in the book of David, when, or the book of the story of David, when a bear and a lion came to attack his sheep, he killed the bear with his bare hands, like Samson also killed the lion. God would have given him supernatural strength to do that. A natural man could not kill a bear with his bare hands, a normal natural man. But also, uh, uh, not only did a bear kill David's sheep, but Elisha. The children were mocking him. Young children were mocking him. Young people were mocking him, calling his names because of his bald head. And as he was walking through the forest, they kept mocking him, calling him names. And he said, stop mocking me. Stop calling me names. But they never stopped. And he said, if you do that again, I'm going to call the bears to come out of the forest. And they continue to mock. And Elisha called for two big female bears. And they came running out of the forest. And they caught 42 children. And the Bible says he tore them. So you can imagine their big claws attacking the children. And the lesson goes out, never ever mock or make fun of people. Especially God's people, the children of God, Christians. So whenever you talk about a bear, you'll often think about a lion. And this is a song we often sing, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. 
And I love this here. I love, I love lions. I love watching the hunting and running after them and just waiting for the right moment to attack their prey. Of course, they rely on, on animals, wild animals going about, whatever that is, to attack the king of the jungle and not too many animals. Even when you see a crocodile attacking a lion crossing the river, quite often the lion will turn around and growl or bite the crocodile and the crocodile lets go and off goes the lion. But yet a big, a big horse or an animal four or five times bigger than a lion, the crocodile will pull it into the water and it can't beat the crocodile. But the lion often will beat the crocodile whenever the crocodile gets. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those that seek the Lord lack no good things. The Bible says, seek the Lord early in life, find God, put your trust in him and live your life pleasing to him. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, Call upon him while he is near. It's a beautiful verse of scripture. Quails. You might never have seen a quail. It's a very interesting little bird. It's a chubby bird. It's a meaty bird. And whenever the children of Israel were walking through the wilderness, they asked God for food. Moses prayed for food. And every morning they woke, they woke up, there was bread uh, provided for them. And also they were wanted meat for their sandwiches. And God caused a multitude of little quail to come as often as they needed. And they flew nice and low so that the children could catch the little birds and be able to pair, prepare these birds for eating. And that's how God fed the children of Israel for some 40 years. Manna from heaven. And he woke up in the morning, fresh bread and fresh meat in the form of the little quails. The people asked and he brought quails and satisfied them within the bread of heaven. Even in Psalms, talking about this wonderful story about the quails and the bread. Then we're talking about birds, a little innocent bird, small bird, is a sparrow. God mentions sparrow, sparrows many times. He says when a little sparrow falls to the ground, do I not know about it? Do I not care for it? Then how much more do I not care for you, my children? And then do you know how many hairs you have in your head? And I don't have very many. I can probably count them with one hand. But natural people, we've got lots of hair. Even a wee baby's born. Can you count? It's almost impossible to know how many hairs are on your head. Thousands and thousands and thousands. But whenever you think about God, why even the hairs of your head are all numbered? Fear not. You're more valued than many sparrows. So God even knows all about the sparrows. He values them. He loves them. And he says, even your, a head, the hair on your head, do I not know exactly how many hairs are on your head? The little sparrow. What about the camels going through the desert? Camels are mentioned many times in the Bible. I've been on a camel before a few times. And I know this story way back in Genesis when Abraham had a son called Isaac. God promised Abraham he would promise through him would come the blessing, would come the son of God. And so he said, so Abraham, you have to have a son and your son will have a son, son, son. Generation after generation. His son Isaac was like 40 years old, never married, never had a wife. And Abraham then thought, what do I do? So he sent the servant to a faraway country to find a wife for Isaac. And he took 10 camels with him. And whenever he got there, he found a outside a village. There was a well. And he sat by the well and he said, Lord, I want you to help me. The first girl that comes to, to get water to take away with her, I'm going to ask her for a drink of water. And she says, of course you can have a drink, but do you mind if I draw water for your camels as well? She will be the wife for Isaac. A stranger came by the name of Rebekah, and the servant said, excuse me, can I have a drink of water? And she replied, of course you can have a drink of water. Do you mind if I can draw water for your camels as well? A camel's a huge animal, much bigger than a cow. And imagine drawing water for 10 of these animals, 10 of these camels. It's almost impossible, you know, the thought of doing that. 
but with God nothing is impossible. A lovely romantic story. Then her father asked Rebecca, are you willing to go with this man? And she said, I will go. She was taking a step of faith to travel across the world to marry Isaac, whom she had never met. That's like salvation. It's like becoming a Christian. You put your faith completely in God because no one's ever seen God at any time. And you start your journey with God. Lovely drink. And I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank and she made the camels drink also. One of the most beautiful of all animals, of course, is a horse. It's a favorite by many. And the Bible talks lots of times about horses and chariots. And the Bible talk in the Revelation, the last book of the Bible talks about red horses and white horses and black horses, all colored horses. But the one lesson of the horse, behold, in James chapter 3, verse 3, about controlling the tongue, the mouth, the most dangerous part of the human body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. That they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. So the little bit in the, like a pen, if you like, in the horse's mouth. Like that there. And you hurt her. And you hurt her. And you hurt her. Wow. Can't really talk with a pen in your mouth. But that's what happens. The wee bit in his mouth. You told it to stop. You turn it around. The big animal can turn around by just one little pull of the rein because the bit is in the horse's mouth. And what a lesson to control our temper, our anger, and most importantly, our words whenever we speak. And it's always good to hold your waist or hold your tongue. A little baby horse, of course, maybe related, I'm not sure, is a, is a donkey. The Bible, the Old Test, the, the King James Bible calls he's an ass. It's a donkey. Behold, way back in Zechariah, talking about the Lord Jesus entering Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. I don't know about you, but I've tried many times to ride a donkey. It's really difficult. Still haven't conquered that one yet. Because when you jump on a wild donkey, no one's ever ridden before, it will buck you off. It's a fact. I've tried it. But when Jesus sat on a young donkey nobody was ever on before, immediately he took control of that wild animal. And that, to me, is a lovely thing. We're wild by nature. We're stained with sin. We're born with sin. But when Christ comes in, he takes control. The sin goes out. And that, just like he took control of the donkey, that's what he does with the lives of sinners. Then we submit to the authority of God and we just walk and live our lives pleasing to God. What about the hen? Here's the hen, and I love this here. It's very sad. Just like a little mother hen will cluck, 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 and the chicks come running into her. She feeds him. Whenever it's night time or there's danger, she'll put them under her wings and hide them, protect them, and love them and care for them. And the Lord Jesus looked out over Jerusalem, began to cry. Jesus wept. Because I often would have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. He calls them, he prays for them, he wants them to come to him, but they won't. And even today, many children, they know they should be saved, maybe they want to be saved, but they don't surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. And they keep walking by, they keep going on with their life. And I thought, what a picture when the, when the Lord Jesus calls, we should come and surrender our sin and our lives and our, uh, to him. Just like when a hen, mother hen, calls her little chickens. Last one to, to today is a goat. These goats are very interesting animals. I love watching mountain goats. They can almost go down the face of a cliff, the way they can control their hooves. And I, whenever there, there's a single path, this type of goat, will, one of them will, will bow down to allow the other. Otherwise, if they try both to pass, they'll both fall off the way. And sometimes in life we have to do that. It's called taking the upper hand. It's not nice, but it defeats pride. And that's, it's called humility. Song of Solomon, lovely book in the Old Testament. Turn away your eyes from me, for they overwhelm me. Your hair is like a flock of goats leaping down the sleeps of Gilead. Not only do goats um, walk slowly, but they skip and they jump and they almost dance as they run down the slopes, down the steep slopes. If that was you or me, the moment we took a step, we will tumble and fall to our deaths. But these goats, the natural instinct is with their hooves, they can watch every single step. And what a picture in life 
as we walk our journey with God is to watch every single step. Most importantly, asking God to lead us and asking God to guide us as we go through with God. Uh, what about the, uh, this song here? The good we talked about it a moment ago, the Lion Song. This song is one of the most beautiful songs you learn about. It talks about Psalm 34, whenever the lions may grow weak and hungry. So if you know the words, sing along to this here. Really good song. That. Thank you, Hannah, again for the lovely idea and the PowerPoint on the animals of the Bible. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this teaching today. We we'll thank you, Lord, for encouraging us, for instructing us from your word, the Bible, about animals. And we can learn so much about you, how you loved them. And then we can apply the lesson from the animals to ourselves. Bless the children, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.